What advice did someone give you that changed your life? You let them be and investigate them and their reasons thoroughly for a decent amount of time. Often the emotions have a deeper reason that tells you the right course of action. Of course this is best applied to stuff like being angry or tired etc. Don't make decisions in a moment of rage or frustration. Been dating my best friend for 2.5 years and I've always baffled when people are dating someone they wouldn't be friends with. To me a romantic relationship is like friendship just with a much more intense level of intimacy. I'm really puzzled as to why people would make the biggest commitment in their life with someone who's not their favorite person. It'd be like choosing a lifelong career about something you don't really enjoy or getting something you're not that passionate about tattooed on your face. Not quite advice, but a male co-worker said his wife was his best friend and I realized my husband and I weren't friends at all. Tried to change the relationship but eventually left. Ten years later married a man who was my friend, still married 13 years and he is my best friend. Unfortunately this attitude is generally fleeting and exists mostly during these personal thought experiments. The second your life circumstances demand your attention again you will sideline these ideas until the next time you find yourself thinking what if, rinse and repeat, edit. I'm not suggesting that it's impossible to live by these convictions to some extent, and many amazing people certainly find a way to do it. But the reality is that apathy is the mo for the majority of people simply because we don't have the mental or physical bandwidth to do anything other than tend to our own needs. Yep, a great example is at work my scruples tend to go out the window, at home I compost everything, only buy stuff with recyclable packaging and sometimes treat myself to something I have to throw away the packaging for always keeping count, never using styrofoam. Never drink plastic water bottles, etc etc. At work, sometimes I have to drink plastic water bottles, sometimes I have to eat crap beef jerky from the vending machine or something with styrofoam packaging. I hate it, but I'm consciously working on it at least. Many people nowadays feel miserable and the amount of people with mental illness seems gravely underestimated if you ask me. Miserable people don't have the capacity to save the planet, unfortunately. I think that's actually a really interesting moral complexity to apathy that needs to be explored, discussed more. If life is a finite amount of time. Is it wrong for a person to simply want to enjoy their life rather than attempt to dedicate to changing a future? Perhaps they want to simple relax and enjoy their finite life instead of wasted stress, anxious, and feeling doomed about the outcome and future of the Earth, humanity. Everything seems to be turning into crabs with carcination. Maybe the crab people will have a better time with the whole industrial society thing than we did gonna be hard for them since we've used most of the oil and stuff, but we might all die from climate disasters before the oil is all gone so good for crab people. Good luck guys. Ocean ecosystems collapsing, the rate of which the populations of fish have decreased are alarming, with common fish like tuna decreasing by 97% in the past few decades, due to overfishing, coral reefs dying, fish getting extinct. It's all because of us and it'll come back to haunt us, and it already is. The oceans contain 85% of all life on Earth, and yet we let these big companies throw one garbage truck full of trash into them every single minute. I imagine the oceans will be completely dead by 2070 or before, if it continues the way it is. On fire, because humans set them on fire to clear land for farming. It's important to clarify that they didn't just spontaneously combust. It's beef and soy farmers in Brazil for example who are setting these fires. There was an article in a popular news company recently that had the same headline but the cause of the fires wasn't until the third or fourth paragraph and I'm all that needed to be in the headline instead of masking and protecting the farmers and government allowing them to do so. 
not just soy. Everyone complains about how much water almond farming uses in California, it's a lot, like 10% of total water use. But California alfalfa farming uses even more, and unlike soy, which does have a bunch of other uses, it's almost 100% used for feed. And it's even worse, a lot of the alfalfa, and most of the almonds, are exported to Asia anyway. We are in a historic drought and effectively exporting our water so a few relatively small industries, in terms of the California economy, can make higher profits. They tell us to reuse our shower water and not flush our toilets, when the average toilet flush is about what it takes to grow one almond, and of course agricultural water rates are about 1 slash 20 th of residential rates anyway, e massively subsidized and not even economically viable otherwise. I really find it interesting how we always talk about save the rainforest and yes we do need to do that but we never talk about our oceans as saving them. The oceans affect the environment more than rainforest and yet it seems like what we care about is save the turtles don't use straws when in reality that has very little impact. Straws versus all the other things we do to our oceans. I feel like the whole save the trees campaign backfired. All it did was allow companies to package things in plastic instead of paper products in which plastic literally kills ocean life where as sure cutting down trees does but not near to the effect as plastic and paper is biodegradable. I know cost is also a reason why companies use plastic versus paper as well. The straw thing especially exemplifies how the companies that pollute the most will shift the blame over to consumers who in reality, we have little control over their own plastic consumption. It's Richie Plastic McStrawson's corporation telling the person on the street that actually, it's your fault because you used the plastic straw last week and you should be ashamed, while covering up thousands of tons of plastic being dumped in the ocean by his corporation behind the Save the Turtles, Don't Use Straws banner. This is why I find it amusing I'm interested in not fucking up the planet despite not having much skin in the game, no kids, no plans for kids, yet people I know who have kids don't seem to care, they're all oh I do anything for my kids except seemingly provide them with a planet that is conducive to life. I've experienced the same thing of child-free people being super concerned versus the it will all work out attitude of people with kids. I think it's two things the first being that raising kids and having a job is so mind-numbingly exhausting they're just focused on making it through their daily routines. The second is that climate change is fucking scary so they're in deep denial about it. The thing I notice is people not connecting the dots to the consequences. Oh no it will be hotter. Oh no it will be more of a desert where I live. Oh no the seas will rise and coastal cities will be a little wetter. They don't realize that places our food comes from might stop being able to produce it. That prices go up and some cities may starve. Mass migration and violence and crime would ensue as people would literally be fighting for their survival. I believe Republican leadership, the evil ones, not the dumb ones, believe in climate change and their policy response to it is a southern border wall. Honestly, I live and grew up on a farm in the southwestern Canadian prairies and I've never seen drought or heat like we have had lately. Crops smaller than my knees, projected yields far below previous figures and nothing to be done about it. What used to be an 80 bushel crop is looking to produce 10. And every farm is experiencing this. If this continues our production will grind to nothing and then there will be no food. It's scary. Don't eat fish. The fishing industry is responsible for 10% of plastic pollution in the oceans. They are responsible for overfishing 90% of fish stocks globally. They have caused more extinctions than any other human disturbance. They are also destroying thousands of years old pristine ecosystems such as deep sea reefs that will not recover. Also people can buy shit tuna in a can and crabfish that has been batted beyond recognition and sold under a new name to sound special. Edit, the 90% stat, 
edited from 96%, refers to the percentage of global fish stocks that are overexploited or depleted, meaning that only 10% of global fish stocks are managed sustainably. Also going to take this opportunity to plug the organizations here around us. They have been documenting commercial fishing and the collapse of global fish stocks, including fishing that the UN Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, doesn't report. They do incredible, if not mildly depressing and terrifying work. Edit 2 to address some common questions slash comments. I am not well informed on fish farming. If someone else is please feel free to link some sources and information regarding their sustainability. I said don't eat fish because it's the easiest or and most effective way to reduce the impact of overfishing. I personally still eat freshly caught fish from friends and family as I know they only catch a few fish at most. Sorry guys. No you wish you were hauling in an esky full every time and do so rarely and within regulations. If you can be sure you're eating fish that is sustainably caught or harvested, then by all means, this thread is about the collapse of aquatic ecosystems. Derailing it to say don't eat red meat isn't in theme with the point of the comment. There are a lot of other sources. Warming oceans are killing the coral reefs. Those reefs are not only an important part of ecosystem but also provide a lot of oxygen. This has been talked about for decades. HTTPS colon slash slash n dot m dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash coral underscore bleaching. As humans we don't care about one degree temp change but a lot of ecosystems are pretty sensitive to these changes and those changes will affect us. That is second and third trophic level. The biggest danger is losing the base of the food chain. Photosynthetic microorganisms, plankton etc. The real problem is half of the coral in the Great Barrier Reef has died in the past 3-4 years, not just bleached, dead, due to heat stress. The acidic ocean also dissolves the shells of corals, diatoms, and a wide variety of other shell-producing organisms as they make them. We have measured a 50% decline in the amount of ocean algae around the world over the past century. It's a foundation of the ocean's ecosystems. And BTW, it made a majority of the oxygen you're breathing now. My dad told our family we had money trouble our whole lives, so when he and my stepmother's illness is turned terminal, Imagine my surprise when I found the hundreds of thousands he had saved for retirement. He died at 65, she died 4 months later just shy of 58. While I'm glad we had the funds to take care of them and my brother and I are now in a much better place financially because of our inheritance. Some things actually would have been easier if they had been as broke as my father said they were. Neither of them got to enjoy retirement and the last half a decade was fucking miserable for both of them. I wish we had taken even 10k for a big family vacation before they both got so sick. So yeah, try to do both but I'm definitely in the enjoy it now camp. Ditto. Mom saved and saved denied herself small pleasures and made sure to always be forward thinking to retirement. Retired, diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer, made it 10 new weeks, hadn't even turned 66, changed my perspective on balancing now versus later. That's for sure, I feel you, my friend. Thanks for sharing this, I'm sorry to hear about your mom, may she rest in peace. I truly appreciate you sharing this though, it helps to form my perspective as I've been feeling this same way and like I'm being more frugal than I need to be, as I am of the mindset we should just enjoy life now but money problems specifically give me anxiety from growing up so now I don't spend money on stuff that I'd enjoy for myself when in reality maybe I should, at least to a certain extent. My mom died at 54 from cancer, very loving and never favored any child over the other, but stayed in a loveless and verbally abusive marriage with my dad. 
at one point when it was in remission and doctor said to avoid stress my dad kept being same asshole and my brother wrote him a letter asking him to treat my mom better. My dad stopped talking to him and wouldn't let him and his son come over. My mom started looking for apartments, but surprise, her cancer came back. Six months to live. My whole family got together and acted like nothing had happened. My dad was sweet and loving for those last six months and my mom was so happy. I am 49 and have had some tough years with health and marriage, but I cut people out of my life that don't treat me well. I have had so much happiness in my life I and would not be that upset if I die young like my mom. I cut my dad out of my life because of repressed memories of sexual abuse from when I was five, which caused decade of major mental health problems I had. My brother and sister are team dad and don't talk to me anymore. I've never been better mentally and emotionally since then. If you fail to prepare be prepared to fail. If you prepare and we're all wiped out by a meteor strike or super volcanic event, so what? You won't be any deader. If you don't prepare for your senior years and nothing catastrophic happens, your final years will be spent in poverty, misery, want, and need, all served with a heaping side of regrets. I got my PhD studying infectious bacteria and used to develop new antibiotics in biopharma. It's really hard and most pharma companies completely shut down their bacteriology, and many, virology as well departments over the last five to ten years because there's no money in it eventually even things like minor surgery will be life-threatening due to infection he probably is but he's not alone there is people around him that don't want to change in the status quo also his people literally think he is the grandson of a god and that the exterior world wants them all dead how do you think it would go if he was all porn for you, cheeseburger for you, your life, your parents and grandparents was a lie, nothing is real you, it's a ticking time bomb. My favorite Edward Bernays quote, the conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democratic society. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government which is the true ruling power of our country. Dot 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 we are governed, our minds are molded, our tastes formed, our ideas suggested, largely by men we have never heard of. This is a logical result of the way in which our democratic society is organized. Vast numbers of human beings must cooperate in this manner if they are to live together as a smoothly functioning society. Dot, 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 in almost every act of our daily lives, whether in the sphere of politics or business, in our social conduct or our ethical thinking, we are dominated by the relatively small number of persons dot 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 who understand the mental processes and social patterns of the masses. It is they who pull the wires which control the public mind. Edward Bernays, Propaganda. Comments are one half right. Oceanic eco collapse, but indirectly. You see dolphin predators are dying and the prey more abundant. Dolphins are going to mass produce at an insane scale, and grow more and more intelligent as they are already insanely smart. Us humans will pay no attention to them as we think we are better, but in 5000 years they will overcome us and take over the surface. Humanity Dolphin Galactic Wars will ensue and humanity will ultimately fall. The biggest threat to humanity has always and will always be greed. There's so much corruption in every system we have why because people need more money or power wanting more to feel powerful. No matter what or at there is always corruption somewhere in their city, state, or country. Hell I could be wrong but honestly that how I see it everyone needs something. But it requires money. My still left my brother because it's not like when we first got together, we're just best friends now. I tried so many times to explain to her that the whole point of marriage is that your spouse is your best friend. You won't always be on fire for each other like you were on your first date. But wouldn't you rather spend your life with someone that you have a hundred inside jokes with? 
Someone that listens to your work problems and knows how you like your coffee. Someone that will pick you up from the airport with your favorite fast food. I just don't understand when someone thinks that sex and attraction are what make a marriage work.